Hey, it's Emily and this is going to be my June book haul video. So in June, I hauled quite a lot. I had a book buying ban. Oh, I just remembered another book. Okay, I'll grab it in a sec. Um, so I had a book buying ban in May, although I was sent one book, which is the one I just remembered. So I'll haul that first. And then it was my birthday, so I got some lovely gifts. So thank you very much for those who sent me something. And I got books from my family and I bought myself stuff as a treat as well. Um, however, I did get loads of book tokens, so I have a couple of days planned in July and August where I'm going to go book shopping, um, going to London, and yeah, going to spend those, but those will come in a later video when I do another <laughs> book haul. <laughs> I'm going to grab that one before I forget. Also, apologies if this video is quite shaky. I am sat on my bed, the tripod's on my bed, I'm just feeling a bit of a cosier video today. Maybe I should make my pillows look nicer in the background. <laughs> so the book that I was sent very kindly is The Last Word by Taylor Adams. I believe Emily at Hodder sent this to me. Uh, she posted a tweet about it and I said, yeah, that's something I would definitely be interested in. And so I got a final copy hardback sent to me. I haven't actually read No Exit, but this actually does sound very interesting. I believe it's about a woman who's house sitting and she gives a negative review of this book and the author I think is then out to get her I don't really know I think that's it but it sounds very intrig intriguing sorry and I'm very grateful to have received a copy of this because I definitely want to dive in very soon so this is the only book I hold in May now I'll get on to the books I hold in June we'll start with the books that I bought myself before my birthday and the first one of those is The Lighthouse by Alex Bell so if you saw I haven't actually put it up yet I was gonna say if you saw my reading vlog for these for the amazing book awards you'll know however um I haven't actually posted it yet because I haven't edited it however I did really enjoy The Lighthouse which is one of the books that was for the book awards it was in the shortlist and so when I was at the book awards I met Alex Bell which is really lovely and she signed it to me um so yeah that was very cool me and chloe went i was like for yeah, guests so we got to talk to the authors beforehand which is really nice have a little buffet we were here for the food not kidding we had a great time so that was the first book i bought myself um also on that night i bought how to die famous by benjamin dean so this book i don't think is out yet it might be by the time this video goes up However, um, he said that he hadn't seen finished copies of his book yet, but we were saying them just at the book awards early. I think it comes out some point in July. But yes, this is his latest release and he also signed it for me. There you go. Um, so yeah, also got to talk to Benjamin Dean before the book awards. He was very lovely as well. They all were, they all were, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so I thought I'd pick this one up. I really enjoyed The King is Dead. Um, so I definitely want to pick this up soon. Also at the Book Awards, I did pick up When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler. So Liz Kessler was the host of the night. She won the awards previous in the previous year. Um, and so I used to read the Emily Winsnap books when I was younger. When she won last year and she was going to be the host, I was very excited to kind of see her, meet her. And she's a really lovely person, really great speaker. And um, yeah, I then, she really, really pitched this book. I hadn't actually heard of it. So um, I'm definitely very intrigued now. I think it's gonna be very heartbreaking and it's based, I think, on her dad and granddad, their story. So I think it's inspired very much by her family history, which is very interesting. I haven't actually explained what these are about. Um, okay, this is a horror set on an island of like Scotland in the middle of nowhere and things start going weird. I definitely recommend that one. It's a YA. It's, I think, to do with um kind of a celebrity journalist i think which benjamin dean was he worked for buzzfeed so i think it's very inspired by that that's very interesting and then this is yeah it's a world war ii holocaust retell not retelling but like set then um and like i said very inspired by liz kessler's family history um let me see what other books i bought myself so the only other book that i bought myself in this haul is the devil's flute murders by seishi yokomizo and i'm very interested intrigued uh, interested as well that works too emily um but i've read three of the books in this series the Ken kazuki kandaichi detective series or Detective Kandachi series, or I can't remember the name of it, but um, I really, really enjoyed the last two that I read. My favourite so far has been Death on Gokuman Island, which is, I think, the most recent one I've read. I have The Village of Eight Graves on my TBR over there, and so I definitely want to read that first and then get to this one. But this one, actually, I found in my Waterstones, like, before it was meant to be published. I think it was only meant to be published, like, yesterday, but I found it, like, a, 
around my birthday time I just thought this could be my birthday treat to myself I buy I'll buy this because it's not meant to be out yet so yeah that's why I bought this this I don't actually know much about the plot but it's sort of like a 1940s I want to say it's post-war Tokyo um and yes yeah, so they've slowly been translated there's a whole series the author was pitched to me as being the Japanese Agatha Christie so that's why I first got into the Hanjin murders and really fell in love so I really do love our Kazuki Kondaichi, like the character, the detective. Um, he's just a fun character and I feel like he's very different from your other detectives that you get in books. Amid the rubble of post-war Tokyo, inside the grand Tsubaki house, a no once noble family is in mourning. The old Viscount Tsubaki is a brooding, troubled composer has been found dead. When the family gather for a divination to shed light on the patriarch's demise, Death visits the house once more, and the brilliant Kazuki Kondaichi is called in to investigate. But before he can get to the truth, Kondaichi must uncover all the Tsubaki's most disturbing secrets, whilst the gruesome murders continue. Ah, oh, this is... I love it when there's, like, not just one murder. Especially with these ones, like the Inugami curse, Death on Gokumon Island. Though, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So, this is... They're getting chunkier. They're getting chunkier. How long is this without getting spoiled? About 350 pages, so... Looking forward to jumping into that one. And I think with that, let's jump on in to the books that I was gifted by my lovely friends and family. So first up, I got a book that I have been wanting to read for a while now. I got gifted it by my lovely parents, and that is Agatha Christie, um, A Very Elusive Woman by Lucy Worsley. And I'm going to actually see Lucy Worsley talk about Agatha Christie on her like book tour for this. Um, I watched her documentary on it, and I just love everything about Agatha Christie, if you didn't already know. Um, she is probably one of my favourite authors, well she is my, one of my favourites, her and Patrick Ness are up there, um, so I'm very intrigued to read this book properly and actually learn more about her life, I know quite a bit, like I said I watched a documentary and I'm really really interested to see what she says at this book tour talk about her life, but yeah and this is definitely a chunker, like this is heavy this book, but yeah just her life in general and when she met her new husband because we love him, Mr Max, fantastic, so Thank you very much mum and dad for this and I'm very excited. I haven't actually looked at the naked hardback yet. Should we do that together? Pretty cool. Nice. That's that one. Next I'm going to mention a book that my lovely friend over here on booktube Chloe from Chloe Reed's book sent me and that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I have really really enjoyed Day Series and the Six. Oh that is Rebecca texting me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed Days of and the Six and Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo. I do own Malibu Rising. Oh, it's going to do again. There we go. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I definitely want to read this. Chloe read this when we were in Turkey together. She did say to me that as soon as she saw this on my list, after reading it together, well, we didn't read it together on holiday, but we were on holiday together when she read it, she really wanted me to have it. So that's why she got this one for me. And I'm so, so grateful because I, yeah, I really enjoy it. And I much prefer this to like hardback cover to the new paperback cover that they've put out in the UK. So I'm very excited to read this. And I have just reserved today the audio book from my library app from Borrow Box, but it doesn't actually get in until like January. Funnily enough, it's due in, on Chloe's birthday in January so this, it feels like the stars are aligned here like I'm just saying I'm very excited to jump on into this everyone says oh I don't like tennis but I really love this book so yeah thank you Chloe then I'm going to talk about another one that my family sent me uh, or sent me my brother gave me he said I could basically go into Waterstones and pick a book and I picked Sinister Spring by Agatha Christie so it's the newest one of the like season short story collections that they're putting out so recently like a couple weeks ago I read Midsummer Mysteries, Sinister Spring came out and it was in Waterstones and I thought yes because it is stunning and I just want to read more like the Christie and I'll probably save this until next spring now because I want to kind of read them in the right scene at uh, scenes seasons so yeah but I just think oh it's stunning and I don't know how many short stories are in this one the last one had about 12 I want to say yes yeah, so there's 12 in here as well so I'm very excited to get to that but I, like I said I probably will save it for next spring like March time where I can jump on in when it's beginning to get warm again so that's that one so thank you Henry as Rebecca so rudely interrupted <laughs> previously I'm kidding um I will talk about the books that she sent me she really really was lovely and sent me two the first one she sent me is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston um she read this very recently and Rachel raves about it all the time and after they both talked about it I added it to my wish list on Amazon especially because it was only like three pounds at the time um, but before I could buy it myself, 
my birthday came around and Rebecca got me The Dead Romantics and so I'm very excited to read this very soon I hope because the more and more I hear about it the more Rachel raves about it the more Rebecca talks about it in the sense of like I remember we doing sprints together and she was telling me about things that happen and I was like you know what now I really want to read this so also everyone I mentioned today I will leave their channels down below because yes give them all some love but um yeah so I'm very very grateful to have this and I cannot wait to read this oh so at first I was like, oh, it's just going to be another hype book. But the more I hear about it, the more I kind of am like, oh, that is something I probably would enjoy. And I love the whole ghost aspect of this. So I know it's an adult romance and there's ghosts involved. So that's that one. And the other one she gave me is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, which I found out from Victoria. I heard her talk about it. I think she saw it in, in like one of her vlogs. She saw it in the store and picked it up. I really like the sound of it so I added it to my wish list and here we have it. It's very nice and floppy um, but yeah I cannot wait to read this. This sounds very cozy and kind of like the maximum fantasy my brain can take. I'm not a fantasy reader so this much, this amount of fantasy seems about the right amount for me. Quite cozy. So yeah thank you very much Rebecca for that and I'm just so intrigued by it. It sounds very interesting. And I can't wait to get to that one too. Then we have what my lovely friend Ella sent me. And that is The Mouse Trout 70th Anniversary Edition by Agatha Christie. So this is like the play script. Um, but it also has like bonus content at the end. From when it first came out. So I think I ran out of storage then. But oh, it's getting darker now. It's beginning to rain. Anyway, where did the sun go? The Mouse Trap. So yeah, it has all the notes. Like the, as well as the script, it has loads of notes about um, the costume, the set, and how it's changed, and loads about the original cast, the characters. Yeah, so it, sounds, it looks really cool. I just can't wait to dive into this. Thank you so much, Ella. I was so surprised when this came on, like, like came through the door. I, yeah, I can't believe it. So thank you so much, Ella. As you know, I love my Agatha Christie, as you can tell probably from this haul. I'm gonna go onto my Agatha Christie shelf. I'm gonna buy an Agatha Christie bookcase when I move in. Two months yesterday. Two months yesterday. I moved. Can't. Cannot wait. Then we have lovely Rachel over here. Rachel Keris. She sent me Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwan. I have not read anything. I haven't read Babel. I haven't read The Poppy War. Like I said, not a fantasy person. Not really into that. But this seems very intriguing. And Rachel picked it up very recently as well. And so maybe we could do a little buddy read um, if she hasn't read it already. But I definitely want to dive into this very soon. It looks very cool um, and sounds very interesting. But I think this is a book set in like publishing. So I cannot wait to dive in. And I feel like this is something that everyone's talking about at the minute. Everyone's reading it. I haven't really heard any negative reviews about it. Maybe that's just me not looking properly. But from what I've heard, everyone seems to love it. And I can't wait to be part of that crowd too. I hope. I hope I love it. But I definitely want to read it very soon. Um, I just love the colour, cover, sorry, it's very striking. So then we got two more, which my uncle, aunt and cousin sent me for my birthday. The first one is Finley Donovan is Killing It. So this has definitely been around for a while. I was kind of like, ah, it's a hype book. I don't care about that. Like I was not, not drawn to cover, didn't really care. I wasn't really listening when people talked about it. And then one day I actually listened to what the plot is about. And I was like, that actually sounds like something I would enjoy. So why haven't I added it to my wish list or water yet. I'm now actually very intrigued. Everyone seems to love this. So now I want to read it very soon <laughs> because it sounds really intriguing. I think someone mistakes her for an assassin or something. Oh, she's a hit woman. Yeah. So someone mis mishears what she's talking about. I think she's a hit woman and is then like hired to kill, I think, someone's husband or something. But I'm very intrigued because I've, I've realised, well, I mean, this isn't very assassiny, but like assassins are my niche, especially Recently, I've been really loving blah, 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 words. I'm really loving reading about assassins, um, like Bullet Train and Three Assassins were really, really good. Um, and a couple of others that I've read recently that I'm just assassins are my thing. They just are. That's my favourite thing. Right, my stack is about to fall off my bed. The last book in this haul, um, and the last one that my uncle sent me, um. And that is Falling Hard for the Royal Guard by Megan Clawson. I just saw this on TikTok one day, like the actual author was talking about it, being like as a TikTok ad, was like promoting it. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll add that to my wish list. And now I see it everywhere. So now I feel like I kind of have to read it. It sounds very interesting. Um, 
and I think this is set for the main character who lives at the Tower of London as the author does I think she grew up inside the Tower of London I think her dad was part of the guard um as a beef eater I could be wrong I'm very intrigued so that's another little romance I'll probably read over the summer when I'm on holiday I might take it away because it, it feels like something I'll fly through very easily like a very easy read yes yeah, so that's the last last book in this haul let me see if I can actually hold up this stack okay oh my god this is heavy oh my life that was heavier than I was expecting <laughs> I need to go to the gym there we go there's my stack that's my June book haul so thank you very much to everyone I have to put this down who sent me something um to my lovely friends and family who gave me gifts and all those who have sent me book tokens as well i will be going out and spending them very soon don't you worry i can't believe it how many even is that one 14 books here so thank you very much that's one of my biggest book hauls in a long time um so i'm very very grateful and yeah so many so many exciting books to read soon let's hope i can get some good reading done in july and start getting through these so yeah my phone ran out of storage again just as i was wrapping up but thank you very much for watching and please give it a like if you enjoyed it and i look forward to seeing you in a brand new video bye